Hello, and welcome back to Creative Coding with Maxime. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Voronoi. What is a Voronoi? Well, Voronoi is a technique where you take a random distribution of dots, say, and then for each dot, you designate a region where every point within that region is closest to that dot. So, what does that look like? Like this. Apologies for the garish colors, but I wanted to make sure that it was visible. So as you can see, for each area, the dot inside that area, or for each point inside the area, uh, this dot is the closest dot. And what that means is that on the border, you get a line, which is exactly in between both lines, and also parallel to the line that you can draw between these two dots. So you get like a cross thing here. All right, and yeah, today I'm gonna to show you how to do this in a shader. Here we go, okay, cool. So this is Shader Toy, by the way. It's a tool that you can use to write WebGL shaders. Um, I will also have a setup for the for the Voronoi in P5, um, but uh, the setup for that is a little bit less interesting. So if you want the code for that, you can find it in the description, uh, and the code for this as well, because Shader Toy is another editor in which you can uh, you can share your code uh, through a link. So the first thing what we're going to do is uh, we're going to remove these bits, and we're just going to say color equals black oh. oh of course it has to be a vector three um and then so here you've got the uv coordinates as it says normalized pixel coordinates from zero to one so that means that here is point zero zero and then it goes all the way up to point one one and that's the entire coordinate system that we have for the shader and so what we want to do is we want to start out by uh, uh, let's see first we're going to need some trigonometry so we're going to define the constant 2 pi and then we're going to want to generate some dots and for that we're going to need a counter which we can use to make a for loop and this counter will be a const because then you can use it in a for loop uh, because that's a requirement um, all right then what I want to do is I want to turn the UV into coordinates. Uh, that'll be more useful later, but uh, that's all right. And uh, we're going to start by generating a bunch of dots. So what we need is a uh, for loop. And so what I was saying before, the reason why it needs to be a const is because in the shader, I believe, if I have this correct, what it does, it just takes this loop and it takes the code inside the loop and it just copies it the amount of times of the variable. And so at compile time, it needs to know how many times the loop is going to be run and you can't do a variable thing that you could change from somewhere else. Um, but in this case, that's not, doesn't complicate things much. And so what we're going to do is we're going to generate some positions. And in order for these uh, to get a bunch of random positions, we're going to need a random function. And I found a nice one from the book of shaders, which I'm just going to copy here. And basically what this does is a function. It takes in a vector two of coordinates and then it returns a random value. And what happens here is it's basically a slightly complicated function with really large numbers that for any input of x and y, if you have another value that's quite close to it, the output will be variably different. And so technically speaking, it's not real random, but it's just complicated enough that you won't be able to track it. And you can make functions like this uh, any kind of way. However, if you want to check how random your function is, you can just output the value as a color. And then, as you can see here, it is quite random. You might recognize some 
repetitive patterns and you might like that or you might not like that and then you can change stuff around here um, but this is a nice way to check sometimes if you, if you have a bit less uh, good one then you might get uh, repeating patterns let's see if we can maybe have that happen there you go so if you if the numbers you fill in are a little low or whatever you can see that you can start recognizing the patterns and you get some weird shit out of this anyway uh, so we'll just use this and what we're going to do is instead of using this to generate colors we're going to uh, use it to generate positions <coughs> all right so uh, let's see right to false equals so we need to generate an x and a y i'll put them on different lines to make it a bit more readable then what we'll do is we'll get a random value based on the uh, index for this loop and it's a vector too because that works well with coordinates in this case we've got an index so we have to convert it to a vector two but if you just put one argument into a vector two it'll generate a value where both the, both the x and the y are equal to the to the i value all right uh and then for the y i'm going to do the same thing but to um keep it uh different because if we just have the same value you get the same value um to make sure that the y isn't the same as the x, we'll add a half, and that again will give us a, a different input for the random function, and so a different output. Uh, all right. Now, if we want to be able to see these dots, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, light value, which we put to one, and then we say light multiplied by the step. I have to see if I do this in the right order. But we'll make a little, very small value. Um, uh, wait, hold up. Okay. First, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need the distance. So we have the, we have the position here, and what we want to do is we want to be able to draw the dot. So what we want to do is we want to get the distance of the current coordinate. Uh, the current coordinate to that position. So, wait, maybe I should have explained. Yeah, this is a pixel shader, so what that means is this function is going to run for every uh, pixel here inside the inside the rectangle, and so the coordinate value here is going to tell us which pixel we're at, and it starts at zero zero and it goes to one one. So if we do, if we get the, sorry, I'll just type that out. Um, if I get the uh, distance by getting the uh, length of the two vectors subtracted, so this is the position that we generate here, and this is the coordinate of the pixel, then we know how far away this pixel is from that position. And we'll say that if the pixel is close enough, then we'll make it make the light dark. <coughs> that way we can see it. All right. Uh, so we do it like this. And so for most things so what this the step does is it's zero if the value is lower than 0 0.005 and it's one if the value is higher than 0 0.005 and what this means is that if the pixel is within the 0 0.005 which in this case is the radius for the dot then uh, uh the value will be zero and so light will be multiplied by zero it'll be zero and it'll be black whereas if it's higher than 0 0.005 which is for the vast majority of the pixels it'll just stay one and it'll stay white now if we multiply this by the light we should be able to boom see a whole bunch of see a whole bunch of dots um cool now you might notice that they're not exactly circular and uh that is a thing i'll explain in a later video how to correct that but for now it doesn't particularly matter because the dots are not going to be part of the render but i just wanted to show them so that you can see what was going on now a cool trick that we can do is if we take the i mouse value which is the position the xy position of the mouse and we add it here then we can generate random dots based on the mouse position so if you uh, click and move your mouse around then you get random new random positions which is nice to see the variation of what, what can be possible all right cool so now that we have the position here what we want to do is we want to draw <coughs> we want to draw the area and what that means is that we want to know for every coordinate for every pixel we want to know which one is the closest dot and so the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this dist value that we have here 
and we're going to remember which one was the closest. We're going to loop through all of them, and then we'll end up with uh, which dot is the closest. At that point, we can take the index of that dot, and we can use that to generate a color value so that the value will be the same for all pixels inside that area for which that dot is the closest. All right, cool. So what that means is that we'll need a value that tells us what the closest distance is. And because we're going to find, we're going to check if the new distance is lower than this value, what we need is for this value to start out as the maximum value that it can be. And the maximum distance you can have is from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So if we do the length of vector 2 with value 1, 1. So if you do 1, then it goes for both the x and the y. Uh, and then we ensure that uh, this, uh, this value is set up correctly. Then we'll also have an index. And we'll just initialize a 0. All right, cool. Now, what we want to do is we want to check if the distance is lower than the previous closest distance, which in the case of the first loop will always be true because any of these dots is going to be closer than here and here. Uh, I mean, unless the dot is exactly up, but you know what I'm saying. All right, uh, then uh, we'll update the closest dist, so we know that's the closest distance, and then we'll set the index to i. And what this means is that uh, at the end of this loop, uh, we'll know what the index is of the closest dot for the specific pixel that this function is running for. Okay, cool. Now we can use this i. Let's take off the light value for now, um, or indefinitely. And then we'll generate, we'll use the random function again, turn it into a vector 2 again, put the index in there, and then boom, there you go. We got ourselves a Voronoi. Now, that was pretty simple, I think. True to the title. And yeah, if you click, you can get new ones. All right. In the next video, I will show you how to make a cool animation with this. And I'll also uh, do a fix for the for the for it being stretched. If you if you look at it now, you might see that it looks a bit like stretched out. It was the same with the, uh, if you have the uh, light here. Uh, then you get the dots, so the dots are also a bit stretched out. I'll show you how to fix that in the next video. Alright, thank you for watching. Uh, our code should be in the description. Let me know if you use it to make something cool with it. And, uh, bye!